What is ABBA's secret? What's the secret of the classic ABBA sound? We are familiar with the components, Benny's melodies, Björn's stories and lyrics, and the voices of Frida and Agneta. But to put all of this together, these individual ingredients, which are often called magical in and of itself, how is it possible to put them together and create even more magic on top of it? Today we are celebrating 79 years of the sound of ABBA, 79 years of Michael Bitretto. Hey, hey, so it is generally known that ABBA's music is produced by Björn Ulveus and Benny Anderson, but there is a third person who has always been with them and who is the vital key to ABBA's sound, Michael B. Tretto. I would literally describe him as a magician, because on the one hand, Tretto's technique seems obvious and plausible, yet on the other hand, it's almost indescribable how he does it. His approach has an incredible authenticity, consistency and integrity. Michael B. Tretto was born on this very day 79 years ago. The B stands for his actual first name, Bo. He became one of Sweden's top recording engineers and producers and is arguably the fifth member of ABBA when it comes to their musical creativity. With Björn Ulveus, Benny Andersson and Michael B. Tretto, we have a legendary trio always together to create ABBA's classic sound. It's fascinating to see how Tretto's immense input is already evident in ABBA's very first song and bookended in ABBA's final song during those first 10 years. For People Need Love, Tretto gives us that full sound approaching the wall of sound technique by American record producer Phil Spector. He realized the secret of Spector very soon again, even more refined, for ABBA's first number one hit, Ring Ring. Creating an actual wall of sound by layering one and the same instrument and vocal track over and over again. However, Tretto didn't just copy Spectre, he was taking it as an inspiration and made it his very own trademark by expanding it with more ideas and experiments. One night he discovered one of the secrets. He was able to also overdub the exact same part of an instrument but altering the speed. Combined with the other overdubs, a sparkle of sounds, as he would often describe it, was created on top of the main tracks. For the vocal work, he would create overdub after overdub, adding harmonies and different parts, but also the same part twice for a richer sound. He recorded them in different ways with just enough trickery to enhance the sound. But probably the most important secret, his aim was to never take away the human element from it. In 1978, he was asked how many filters and tricks ABBA used when they recorded their songs. Michael said, We tried to record the sound as natural as possible. We tried to get the tone correct at the recording, not wait and fix it during the mixing. But of course we used technical aids, such as a harmonizer. With that you can spread the sound wide between the speakers, it makes the sound sound bigger. These techniques would become more refined and complex in ABBA's subsequent albums. Towards the end, he would even adapt all of this work with analog recordings into the brand new digital recordings with ABBA's album The Visitors. The way how Tretto adapted his sound and secrets from analog technique to digital in such a seemingly seamless way is remarkable in and of itself. As I said, Tretto's creative input is beautifully bookended with ABBA's final song for 35 years, The Day Before You Came. This is another prime example for his ingenious contributions. In that case, Tretto was too curious and started to experiment with new techniques. He checked out the function of a so-called sequencer. This would affect Benny's synthesizer sounds that he recorded for the song. It made them sound cut off to the rhythm of the song. One of them are the synthetic flutes that we hear from the beginning. By experimenting on the sequencer, Tretto turned Benny's synthesizer flutes into these threatening sounds and created one of the most iconic elements in ABBA's The Day Before You Came. It's fascinating that this song was actually recorded on the 20th of August, the very same day as Michael B. Tretto's birthday. These are only some examples of Tretto's input. Like with Björn and Benny's songwriting, it's not too easy to distinguish who exactly did what on which song. 
but that just indicates even more how strong the natural bond of this trio was, a full-on creative flow of marvelous ideas. The creative and personal bond between Björn, Benny and Michael is described by Karl Magnus Palm like this. They became so tuned into each other that once they entered the recording studio, it was as if they each had a part of one and the same brain. Björn and Benny were so eager to work with Michael Vitretto not only because of his technical expertise, but for a variety of reasons. He was extremely musical as well, recording his own music throughout the decades and exploring many genres. Michael's versatility in music perfectly complemented that of Björn and Benny. And he was described as very sensitive. When the long hours of working on the same song over and over again seemed to get overbearing to Abba and the musicians, it was Tretto who would be there to maintain all of their enthusiasm. On top of that, Björn and Benny shared the very same sense of humor which kept them laughing from the first day to the last, as described by Michael himself. Two of my favorite side stories are how Benny kept hiding Michael's clocks on top of a tall speaker when Michael was in a hurry. And just recently, Björn and Benny retold the story how Benny would constantly took Michael's box of matches and turn it upside down so that all the matches would fall out. Michael Bitretto has always appreciated how he was recognized by Björn and Benny, how they gave him full credit but also an equal amount of payment which was very unusual for an engineer. The three of them worked together for the first time in 1970 on Björn and Benny's one and only album as a duo. And Michael Bitretto even worked with the individual members before ABBA with Agneta, Frida and Björn's band The Hootenanny Singers. But when it comes to the sound of ABBA, Michael Bitretto himself also gives credit to three other factors. First of all, the studio itself and the studio environment, especially ABBA's own Polar Music Studio, which opened in 1978. In an interview from 1984, Michael described how important and unique it was that ABBA's Polar Studio had many different recording booths, which were isolated from each other. That way, he was finally able to place his microphones in various distances from each other. He would record every single input from a close proximity as well as from a distance without other sounds flowing into the same microphone. On top of that, every single room had a different acoustic surrounding, for example made of glass or marble. This approach is also a fascinating revelation of ABBA's secret sound, the combination of traditional and modern. Tretto's love for distancing microphones is an old technique. At the same time, he was always interested in making it modern and certainly beyond that. He wanted it to sound more ahead of its time. This is why I would say ABBA's songs never sounded modern, not then and not now. They sound timeless. A second secret for ABBA's sound are the circumstances of timing and the rise of technology. Again, Tretto himself gives credit to the times. De kom i en tid då den tekniska utvecklingen satte igång och satte fart på riktigt. Så det var en vital period i inspelningstekniken. And third, Michael Bitretto had so much enthusiasm to brace the vocal ability of Agneta and Frida. While it did take a long time for ABBA's backing tracks to develop, all the vocal work was usually completed in one single day. It was the most painless bit. With other artists, this is usually the hardest part, but Agneta and Frida somehow seemed to be cut out for this job. We almost never got stuck on the vocals, which almost always happens with other artists. But these two were so persistent and worked hard and energetically. There was never any talk of, oh, not today, I have to feel inspired. Michael was also talking about the marvelous craft of the ladies' voices. They had an enormous amount of control over their own voices and could do the most difficult things. It's very unusual with singers who are able to sing with such precision and still sound convincing, because usually there is always a point where the exactness overpowers the feeling. This often happens with professional backing singers who normally are able to sing anything from a technical point of view, but Frida and Agneta had the added ability to make every part of their vocal performance sound like they really meant what they were singing. Benny himself said this, When you talk about concepts like the ABBA sound, 
you certainly have to mention the songs, the way we arranged them, Michael's contributions and all that. But take away Frida and Agneta and let two other girls sing their parts and the ABBA sound goes out the window immediately. Their voices were simply the most important ingredient of our overall sound structure. In 1980, Michael would even work together with Agneta and Frida alone without the creative input of Björn and Benny to produce ABBA's Spanish album. In the 1980s, he would continue to work with Björn and Benny on their musical chess and on Agneta's solo albums. The Swedish children's albums are produced by Agneta herself with Michael B. Tretto. During the same decade, Tretto would praise ABBA and their legacy, which he continues to do to this day. On his own radio shows, he was even playing rare and unreleased ABBA recordings. This is when ABBA's outtake Dreamworld had its premiere in 1986, years before it was actually released on CD in 1994. Michael was the one who recognized and appreciated us fans for wanting to hear unreleased ABBA. During the 90s, he was participating in many interviews and documentaries talking about ABBA and their musical legacy, and he was even giving us fans more chances to hear more ABBA by sitting at his mixing desk and isolating different tracks from ABBA's original recordings. In 1994, it was his enthusiasm that actually gave us unreleased ABBA songs on CD. For the box set Thank You For The Music, he convinced Benny that Tretto, as an Elvis fan, would be very much interested in hearing unreleased recordings. So Benny gave his blessing and Michael not only went through the master tapes and chose songs in full length, but he put together ABBA undeleted 23 minutes of outtakes. Many of those rare insights into ABBA's recording process actually survived because of Michael Bitretto. During those ABBA recording sessions, he had a separate tape recorder running to capture different versions, outtakes and the development of an ABBA song. ABBA Undeleted is not only a fascinating revelation of amazing outtakes, but the sequence of songs, the dramatic build-up, the way that Michael put it together is incredible. This would be worth to talk about in a video on its own right. In 2001, Michael Bitretto suffered from a stroke which made him retire from public life and music business. This is certainly one of the big reasons why he was not able to come back with ABBA for their most recent album, Voyage. Today, we celebrate the 79th birthday of Michael Bitretto, one of the most tremendous artists to create the unique sound of ABBA. That sound is always a marvel to me Every single component is just at the very right place. Everything and everyone responsible for that sound just seemed to have happened at the right time. And all the pieces fell together so perfectly. I hope this video got us a little closer of understanding this miracle, but you may also understand why I describe Michael Bitretto as something like a magician. It's all on the brink of being indescribable. Thank you, Michael Bitretto. Next time, we are going to explore what I would call ABBA's most hilarious project, a forgotten album from 1976 during the height of their very own career on which all four ABBA members participated. The album is called Let's Boogie and it is an incredible work by Michael Bitretto. If you are not familiar with the album, this is your homework for next time. Listen to Michael Bitretto's Let's Boogie. The shimmer of ABBA is all over it, but it is put in a hilarious juxtaposition with a parody of different musical genres that Tretto came up with. And for now, feel free to share your birthday wishes for Michael B. Tretto in the comments below and let me know your thoughts on Tretto and the sound of ABBA. Alright, until then, hey